opens a transparent trading room for cutting EU red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody, welcome to my Strasbourg blog uh, for April. We had some good weather here on Monday, it was beautiful actually, 20 degrees, really felt like spring and now we've gone back to that horrible old gloom, but never mind, that's the weather we have to put up with. I've arrived here in Strasbourg this week, obviously with uh, the Brexit debate very much on my mind. It's difficult really to make your way around the Parliament here without people stopping you all the time to talk to you about it. I, of, I have many, many emails from constituents, telephone calls, requests to come and speak. It is uh, rather predictably perhaps beginning to take over everything I do. So just very quickly, let me mention a couple of things that have nothing to do with Brexit. Uh, we will be voting uh, this parliament, in fact later today, on a resolution on the use of a weed killer, glyphosate, sometimes known as Roundup, but it's sold under many different names these days because it's not licensed anymore, it's, it's freely available. And this is very, very important because up to somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of the herbicides used in UK agriculture, and probably by you in your garden if you use them, will be based on glyphosate. And we have two completely different scientific opinions. It's a fascinating case actually because the WHO under the International Research for Cancer umbrella have said that it's probably carcinogenic which obviously would, would ring lots of alarm bells we would have to do something. But the European Food Safety Authority, EFSA, which is the authority that, that uh, licenses or, or at least advises the Commission and indeed Parliament on licensing, has said that it's not carcinogenic. Now, how can this happen? Well, it happens because there are two different ways of looking at the data, the meta-analysis of all the data, and most importantly, it's something called co-formulants. So it's, it's the substances that are mixed with the active ingredient to create the product that may be causing uh, the uptake into um, humans uh, and the atmosphere and the environment in, in a different way. So it's an extremely technical issue, but it's also one of very great economic importance because I know from my discussions with farmers all across the southwest that without this particular pesticide they would be struggling uh, to, to get the yields and to work in the way that they currently work. Nobody's saying that you can't work without pesticides, of course you can and we have a thriving organic farming industry in the southwest. I fully support them, but I also support uh, the right of farmers to use pesticides where they think it's appropriate and where, indeed, you can increase yields to the sorts of levels that will uh, make us more self-sufficient in food because we are now, of, you know, at the point in the UK where we're moving further and further away from self-sufficiency and this cannot be a good thing. We need food security, we need food safety, we have to have a balance of the two. So it's an intriguing vote. Um, we will not be voting uh, to ban the re-registration because I've looked at the evidence and I think that the EFSA evidence is perfectly robust, but we will be calling on the Commission to do further tests on the co-formulants. So it's a little bit of a mixture there, but it, I hope that gives you a bit of a flavour of how it works. The second thing we'll be voting on, which is interesting, is PNR, which is Passenger Name Recognition. And I've spoken about this before. This is where uh, airlines are compelled to share the information about people travelling around. It's no more sinister than that, and it gives them the opportunity to trace abnormal movements, which may be perfectly innocent, and that's fine, uh, but then again, they may not and particularly around the Schengen uh, discussion where, as you know, if you fly from Athens to Paris, you're, you're not required to pass through a border. But uh, PNR would give uh, the authorities the ability to see who is flying from Athens to Paris. And, and I think that would be very useful. So we will be robustly supporting that this week. So I'll end on the Brexit discussion. As I say, I'm having lots of discussions about it. This week, lots of questions from people about, is it true that the European Parliament can block the deal that Mr Cameron made? The answer is yes, in theory it's true, because contrary to what people will tell you, Europe is democratic and we do have, as parliamentarians, a right to vote. But 
If you ask me what I think the chances are of that happening, I'd say virtually zero. If the UK votes to stay in on the 23rd of June, I can't see many other than the most mischievous and stupid MEPs suggesting that the Parliament should block that deal. It's just not going to happen. Um, there is a much more uh, potent question in my mind, and that is what happens if we vote to leave when Parliament will then have to be part of the negotiations for where Britain stands, both on trade and all the other relationships. That, I think, is where Parliament could start to be very difficult. So uh, I have no confidence that Parliament would try to make it an easy divorce. In fact, I think they might try and make it rather difficult. But, you know, that's just my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, and I offer it to you as your elected representative, and I hope you'll take it into account. Good luck with your deliberations.